Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro's Neighborhood Development Department is recognizing National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. From October 20th to October 26th, the department will promote the city's lead safe housing program. Residents are eligible to apply for lead-based paint hazard reduction assistance if there are children younger than six who live or frequently visit your house or rental unit, and if your home was built before 1978. Neighborhood Development has grant funding of up to $30,000 for contracted construction work, such as replacing windows and doors, and wrapping exterior trim at homes where lead-based paint hazards exist. If other hazards exist, the city may offer up to an additional $5,000 to correct those issues. For more information, visit the city's website or call 336-373-3624. A grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony is planned for the city's first multifamily housing project funded by the 2016 housing bond and low income housing tax credits. The event will take place at 10 a.m. on Friday, October 25th at Ryan Ridge Apartments located at 4410 Rehoboth Church Road. The 60-unit apartment complex includes one, two, and three bedroom units that are affordable for families. The project was developed by M.C. Morgan & Associates Incorporated of High Point. Total cost of the project is $8 million, 880,000 of that is funded by the 2016 housing bonds. The grand opening is open to the public. Local and state elected officials will be attending, along with tenants, city representatives, the developer, and leasing agents from Windfield Properties who will manage the apartments. For rental information, call the Ryan Ridge Rental Office at 336-807-0705. The City of Greensboro will once again participate in the annual national campaign, Imagine a Day Without Water. The challenge is for residents to use no water on Wednesday, October 23rd. The city's Water Resources Department produced a short video featuring a resident of a city anywhere in the U.S. who has to get through a day without water because of a fictitious emergency. The video will be accessible on the city's YouTube channel, the Day Without Water webpage, as well as on social media. Although lighthearted, the challenge to voluntarily experience a day without water is the reason for the October 23rd recognition. This is an opportunity to educate people about how water is essential, the challenges facing water and wastewater systems, and the need for investment in those systems. To learn more about why water resources professionals say no one should take water service for granted, and to see examples of ways to limit your own use of water on October 23rd, visit the campaign website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. A plant-based diet is one of the strongest nutritional recommendations for cancer prevention. How does your diet stack up? The recommendation is for five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day, lots of whole grains and dried beans. All of these give us the phytonutrients and fiber that we need for cancer prevention. Let me show you how easy this can be. For breakfast, we have some whole grain oats sprinkled with cinnamon, drizzled with honey, and add a little bit of walnuts for those omega-3 fatty acids and protein. Pair that with some low-fat or non-dairy milk and some beautiful berries for that extra boost of color. Another meal idea for breakfast would be whole grain toast with low-fat cheese. Add that spinach to get that vegetable in there and top that with an egg. Always add the fruit. And here are some lunch ideas. Here we have some whole wheat pita bread. Pair that with some hummus and some, some tabbouleh. This tabbouleh can be made with bulgur wheat or quinoa to make it gluten free. Here we have added parsley. That added parsley is a good phytonutrient, a good cancer fighter. Pair that with a lot of colorful vegetables and a piece of fresh fruit and you're good to go. Here is another lunch idea. 
we have a, a sweet potato chili. Um, you can make your own soup. Make sure that you add plenty of vegetables and dried beans, black beans, pintos, chickpeas. All can be added even to a canned soup to boost up the nutritional value. Add in that salad and some whole grain crackers and you've got a lunch to carry you the rest of the day. And here is a quick and easy dinner idea. Well, here we have um, some salmon that I've baked, some lots of good vegetables, again broccoli, all that good color, color means phytonutrients, color means cancer prevention. Here we have some whole grain brown rice and quinoa, pair it with some watermelon for dessert, and if you want a salad and whole grain crackers or a whole grain roll on the side. A second dinner option would be keep it simple with a salad you can add some chickpeas to add that extra boost of fiber and nutrition and you can also add the salmon to the salad as you can see in all of our sample meals that vegetables and whole grains and beans filled up most of our plate that should truly fill up two-thirds of your plate a meat portion should be small about the size of a deck of cards or be used more as a garnish Red meat can increase the incidence of cancer as well. Limit red meat to 18 ounces per week or limiting things such as bacon because of the nitrates. All of these wonderful vegetables can be great on the grill. When you're grilling meat, prepare it in the house by partially cooking it. And then when you grill, keep it on the grill for a shorter period of time. Make sure all the fat is trimmed off of the meat. By following those tips, that reduces the amount of carcinogens that are being produced when it's cooked at such high heat. Let's talk about what we drink. Alcohol is so prevalent in our society. Alcohol has been negatively associated with cancer risk. It's the recommendation, if you're a woman, to limit your alcohol intake to one serving a day, or a man, two servings a day. Sugary drinks are also so prevalent in our society. What are some of the other options that we can drink? Water infused with slices of lemon, limes, strawberries, or melon. Chilled herbal teas over ice. Seltzer water with just a splash of juice. Um, these are all tips that you can do to prevent cancer. Thank you for joining me here today. I hope that this information has been helpful. For more information about the services at the Cone Health Cancer Center, go to conehealth.com slash cancer. I'm Laura Job. The Greensboro community will have the opportunity to discuss regional growth and building equitable cities with a former HUD secretary turned author. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The next Planet GSO speaker series will focus on how cities can promote economic mobility, advance equity, and drive growth. This will be explained by guest speaker Henry Cisneros. He is the former U.S. Housing and Urban Development Secretary under President Bill Clinton. In 2017, Cisneros authored Building Equitable Cities, How to Drive Economic Mobility and Regional Growth. This outlines real-world examples of place-based and people-based strategies that are being used successfully across the country. Cisneros will hold two public forums in Greensboro next week. The first event is free on Tuesday, October 29th from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at the Greensboro History Museum located at 130 Summit Avenue. The second event is a luncheon on Wednesday, October 30th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Cadillac Service Garage located at 304 Market Street. Tickets are $20 and online registration is required. The deadline to register is by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, October 23rd. Planet GSO is spearheaded by the city's planning department as staff updates the comprehensive plan, which guides the city's growth for the next 20 years. Greensboro Parks and Recreation will host a celebratory grand opening for the new dog park at Griffin Community Park. The event will take place from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, October 27th at 5301 Hilltop Road. 
The park includes a fenced two-acre shaded area for dogs of all sizes, a picnic shelter, and a handicapped accessible paved path leading from the Griffin Recreation Center parking lot to the dog park. Deer Hollow Trail, which has been closed during construction, will also be reopened on Sunday, October 27th. The project took longer than anticipated due to a series of construction and weather delays. This new space gives dogs a safe place to exercise and top-notch amenities for residents to socialize. The city plans to add more amenities to the dog park through a community sponsorship program. Residents are invited to honor their beloved pets with a custom dog-shaped plaque. Sponsorships start at $500. For more information, contact Jennifer Hans, Community Outreach and Engagement Coordinator at 336-373-2964. A free weatherization program is available to income-eligible households in need of reducing home heating and cooling costs. The goal of this federally funded program conducted by Piedmont Triad Regional Council is to help residents address health and safety issues in their homes through energy efficiency measures such as insulation, weather stripping, and window caulking, just to name a few. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., residents can meet with a weatherization assistance program representative. No appointment is necessary. Reps are available at the Greensboro Housing Coalition located at 1031 Summit Avenue. Program applications can be filled out and turned in during the meeting. Interested residents should be bring a picture ID, 12 months of utility bills for electric and or gas, along with income verification. The weatherization program is being hosted by the Greensboro Housing Hub, which partners with the City of Greensboro. For more information, contact Nakia Beal, Weatherization Coordinating Specialist at 336-904-0300. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on attorney and a and alum, Kim Gatling. By day, Kim Bullock Gatling is a partner with the Smith Moore Leatherwood Law Firm in Greensboro, focusing on patents, trademarks, copyrights, and information technology. By night, or in what little free time this wife and mother of three boys has, she is also very active in helping her community achieve a better quality of life. Kim follows the example set by her parents. She admits to being blessed to have had so many opportunities presented to her that she feels like it would be selfish if she didn't give back with her time and financial resources. Kim got her first taste of working with the City of Greensboro as she co-chaired the Yes for Greensboro Bonds Committee, helping to educate the community on the importance of the $126 million bond referendum on the November 2016 ballot. Kim grew up in Hampton, Virginia, but her father attended North Carolina A&T and wrote for the North Carolina A&T Register when the Greensboro Four peacefully protested at the Woolworths lunch counter on Elm Street. Kim says the Greensboro Four exemplifies strength and humility and the idea that we can make a difference. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. What's coined as being the greatest homecoming on earth is just days away from taking over the Gate City. Coming up after the break, we'll share the new parade route and highlights of Aggie Fan Fest. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The countdown clock is winding down as North Carolina A&T State University prepares to host the greatest homecoming on earth, filled with football, fan fest, and all sorts of good food. 
Joining me now to explain the city's involvement and to give us highlights of Aggie Fan Fest is Kendrick Mays. He is the special events coordinator for the city. Hello, Kendrick. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Always good to see you. Thank you for joining me. What is involved in coordinating an event as large as Aggie Fan Fest? Yes, ma'am. So <clears throat> Aggie Fan Fest is a citywide event. Uh, you have everyone from engineering and inspections. You have water resources. Uh, so that's on the city side, other departments. Then you work with the university, the homecoming committee. Just want to make sure everything is safe, secure for people to enjoy the event. Okay, and it is quite the event because it's kicking off homecoming, yes, so to speak. It's the first night of the weekend. When will Fan, Aggie Fan Fest take place? And tell us, is this a one-time okay. affair, one-day event? So Aggie Fan Fest is a three-day event. It kicks off Friday, October 25th, goes through Sunday, October 27th, and that's at War Memorial Stadium. Uh, so that's at the corner of Yanceyville and Lindsay Street, or 510 Yanceyville for your GPS. But it's Friday, October 25th is when it kicks off, so come on out and enjoy yourself. Okay, well, for people who haven't been and for those who are returning every year and they love this event, what are some of the highlights that they can expect this year? All right, uh, so when they, when they step out their cars, they'll smell the turkey legs in the air, the funnel cakes, they'll hear the A&T Cold Steel drum line performing, um, they'll see the inflatables, hear the sound of kids screaming out there. Um, so it's a great event, so food, merchandise vendors, um, performances that WNAA 90.1 they've coordinated on our sound stage. Um, the event is free, but the food and merchandise that's not free. I want to make <laughs> yeah, sure people that. yes, ma'am. <laughs> and it sounds like it's fun for the entire family. The entire city, greatest homecoming on earth. So they're coming in from all over the country. So yes, ma'am. Aggie Fan Fest, NCA and T's homecoming. It's a big deal. So we look forward to seeing everyone out there October 25th through the 27th. Okay, now is the city including anything new this year? Yes ma'am, um, so um, participatory budgeting, uh, they'll be out there on Friday night to, to kick it off, so make sure you come, vote on the projects that are important to you in your districts. Mm -hmm. So Friday, October 25th, PB, City of Greensboro, representatives will be out there. Okay, now parking is always that question that people ask whenever we have an event. Yes. Where is the best place to park and would it be free? Okay, so the event takes place at War Memorial Stadium and so around the stadium, because the event is in the parking lot, mm -hmm. if you're in front of the stadium, across the street, those spaces are reserved for vendors. Okay. Uh, so the best place for people to park, yes, it's a little bit of a walk, uh, but the best place would be the Church Street parking deck. Okay. Other than that, there are there's parking surrounding the area. Just make sure you're not parking on anyone's yard, blocking driveways. Mm -hmm. um, but around the festival footprint, that's reserved for vendors. So Church Street parking deck, a little bit of a walk. But other than that, there's parking around the area. And I'm guessing if those spaces reserved for vendors, um, maybe there's a special pass. Correct. So okay. if you do, if you don't have a, a hang tag from your window, mm -hmm. from your mirror, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> and at the Church Street parking deck, um, depending on what time you get to the deck, there's a it's free after six, free on the weekends. Um, so we'd like to stress people to park at the Church Street parking deck. Okay. Well, you mentioned turkey legs, so yes. maybe you just burn off those calories oh, yeah. with that walk to and from your car. Well, is there anything else that we should know? Uh, I know there's a big parade. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything new and exciting happening with that? Well, due to downtown Greenway construction, the parade route has changed. Um, so parade attendees, they used to watch them along Murrow Boulevard. Uh -huh. They don't need to do that this year. So the parade will start at Lindsay and Murrow, um, right where the State Employees Credit Union is. Okay. So the parade will start there and they'll walk down till they get to, Lin to Laurel Street, excuse mm -hmm. me. So Lindsay and Murrow is where it starts, okay. Laurel is where it ends, but they can find all of that information on www.ncat.edu backslash homecoming. Okay. So it's a little shorter, yeah. but due to the construction, so we just ask people to be patient with us. Um, if they're calling, please give us the compliments, not the complaints, but uh, and, yes, ma'am. What time should they line up for the parade? All right, so the parade starts at 8 a.m. Wow, that's early. Yes, so it starts at 8 a.m., Lindsay and Murrow, down to Laurel Street, but they can find that on our website. There's a press release. So if, if they're watching this, if they're talking about it, mm -hmm. please make sure they share the word about the parade route changes. Okay. Now, is that a rain or shine event? 
Yes, Aggie okay. Fan Fest, the parade, okay. rain or shine. Okay, those are devoted oh, fans. Oh, yeah, they'll be out there. <laughs> well, Kendrick, thank you for all you do to make these special events happen. I know you'll be working around the yes, clock during homecoming weekend and keeping things running smoothly. Do come back and keep us posted on all the other great events that you coordinate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot make it to City Hall, we broadcast the meetings right here on GTN. The meetings held in the council chambers are also streamed live on the city's website. Meetings on the first Tuesday of the month will take place in one of the city's five council districts to allow council members to engage more residents. Those meetings will be broadcast the following Saturday at 10 a.m. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month will continue to take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting locations, schedule, and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Between now and March 2020, the city will continue to remind residents the U.S. Census is gearing up. It impacts all Greensboro residents because the census count affects how much federal funding our community receives for various programs for the next 10 years. No need to be alarmed about the citizenship question that received a great deal of media attention this year. A question about being a U.S. citizen will not appear on the census. The city is hoping to educate residents through a short video in English and Spanish produced by the city's TV channel, Greensboro Television Network. Both videos are available on the city's YouTube channel, where additional videos will be uploaded during the next several months. Stay up to date on local U.S. Census 2020 news by signing up to receive city emails whenever updates are posted. Enter your contact information on the e-notified page and select census in the calendar and news sections. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Taylor. If you're looking to get out and catch a show this weekend, you're in luck. Frightful fun awaits at Fright Light, October's evening laser show. Join the Greensboro Science Center's Omnisphere Theater on Friday for an amazing laser light show set to the sounds of the season. From Michael Jackson's Thriller to Boris Pickett's Monster Mash, this show offers tunes perfect for an evening of family fun. Shows are at 7, 8, and 9 p.m. Visit GreensboroScienceCenter.org for more information. This weekend, the Drama Center's Children's Theater presents The Princess and the Goblin, Friday at 7.30 p.m., Saturday at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., and Sunday at 2 p.m. When confronting a nasty troop of goblins who are more silly than scary, a princess learns how to conquer her fears and become self-reliant. Children are encouraged to wear Halloween costumes to the show, and treats will be on hand. Visit greensboro-nc.gov slash drama center for ticket information. This Saturday, multi-platinum selling Grammy-nominated artist Logic will be performing at the Greensboro Coliseum at 7.30 p.m. Logic catapulted to fame with his now five-time platinum 1-800-273-8255 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline featuring Elisa, Kara, and Khalid. This song garnered two Grammy nominations, including Song of the Year. For tickets or to see more events, visit GreensboroColiseum.com. Fall foliage tours are a must on everyone's fall bucket list. Be sure to include a pontoon tour of the fall foliage around Lake Townsend this Saturday and Sunday. Tours begin on the hour at 11 a.m., 12 p.m., 1 p.m., and 2 p.m. The cost is $7 per person. 
The pontoon tour will be sure to leave you smiling. Space is limited and reservations are required, so call 336-373-3694 to reserve your seat. Now through November 10th, the Triad Stage presents an original stage adaption of Bram Stoker's gothic masterpiece, Dracula. A blood-sucking stranger appears in London and has citizens locking their doors and praying for dawn. Join the fight against the darkness that strikes even the purest of hearts. For ticket information, visit triadstage.org. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. The Greensboro Department of Transportation, or GDOT, is surveying residents about micro-mobility as the city reevaluates its electric scooter pilot program. Residents can access the survey on the city's website. Staff will include the survey results in a report detailing this year's e-scooter pilot program. The findings will be presented to City Council at the end of the year. If City Council decides to continue allowing shared micro-mobility programs, a request for proposals for new operation permits will be released in 2020. The City of Greensboro permits Lime to offer scooter rentals within the city limits. Lime's active e-scooter permit is valid until the future of the program is decided. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the City of Greensboro. Forbes recently posted the 2018 Best Places for Business and Careers. The City of Greensboro ranked number 60 out of the top 200 cities across the country. The city ranked number 7 in the category for the cost of doing business. Way to go, GSO. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.